One trapped queen. Two family forks. Three mispronounced words. This is chess one, two, three. One trapped queen. The black rook moves to attack my knight on d6. I answer by moving the knight to attack the queen. The position is quite open, and the black queen has ten squares that she can move to. However, not even one of those squares is safe for her. Notice how the two knights take away half of her flight squares by controlling the five squares along this zigzag. The queen is trapped and black resigned. Frankly, I didn't even realize that my move would win the queen until after I had made it. Two family forks. A family fork is a fork that attacks more than two pieces. This pawn capture results in a three-way fork, with my bishop attacking the rook, the knight, and the a-pawn. Rook to d2 would save all three pieces if it weren't for the fact that my knight is watching over d2. In the actual game, white gave up the exchange by trading on d6, and then gave it up again by moving the knight to safety and allowing me to win his other rook for a bishop. In this game, I bring my bishop out to attack the king. The queen captures my bishop, which is a big mistake because it allows me to move my knight to f7 and fork the king, the queen, and the rook. The king must move, so the queen is lost. Three commonly mispronounced words. When white opens with e4, black can counter with the Sicilian defense by playing c6. The most common continuation brings us to this position, at which point black can play a6. This is the Nydorf variation of the Sicilian defense, named after Polish-Argentine Grandmaster Miguel Nydorf. a6 keeps white's knight and bishop off of b5, and it prepares for a future b5 pawn push by black. White often castles queenside in Sicilian games, so a queenside attack is a common theme for black in such positions. Hypermodern chess is a style that is based on controlling the center indirectly with pieces rather than pawns. In the 1920s, the foremost figure amongst the hypermodern players was the Danish grandmaster Aaron Nimzovich. Nimzovich developed the Nimzo Indian defense, which is shown here. The bishop's pin on the white knight means that e4 is controlled by the black knight. This prevents white from pushing the e pawn all the way to e4. Black often continues by fianchettoing the queenside bishop, exerting more pressure on the center from afar. In a rook and pawn versus rook endgame, the side with the pawn may strive to reach the Luthena position. This position is named after Spanish chess player Luis Ramirez de Luthena. From this position, white can force a win. Here is one winning continuation. At this point, the rook checks have been stopped and the promotion square has been vacated. White will promote the pawn and win the game. I hope you enjoyed this edition of Chess123, and thanks for watching.